This video is about herpes simplex virus. It belongs to alpha subfamily of herpes viridae and it occurs spectrum of diseases involving skin, mucosa and various organs. It undergo latency in the nerve cell and they reactivate later causing recurrent lesions. Herpes simplex virus are of two distinct types, HSV1 and HSV2. They differ from each other in many aspects. In this table, the differences between HSV1 and HSV2 are given. In case of HSV1, the common mode of transmission is direct contact with mucosa or abraded skin, whereas in HSV2, sexual mode or vertical mode are the common modes of transmission. And in case of HSV1, the latency occurs in trigeminal ganglia, whereas in HSV2, the latency occurs in the sacral ganglia. HSV1 usually affect young children, whereas HSV2 usually affect young adult. Then about the antibody distribution. In case of HSV1, it is present in 70 to 90% of adult people, whereas in HSV2 infection, antibody is present in 20% of people. And the common manifestations of HSV1 infection include orofacial mucosal lesions, encephalitis and meningitis, ocular lesions and skin lesions above the waist. And in case of HSV2 infection, genital lesions, skin lesions below the waist and neonatal herpes are the common manifestations. Then about pathogenesis. Pathogenesis is discussed under three headings primary infection, latent infection and recurrent infection. First about primary infection. The transmission is usually occurs through abraded skin and mucus of any size. In case of HSV1, oropharyngeal contact are the usual mode of transmission. That is, transmission occurs through saliva and direct contact with the, the infected person. In case of HSV2, sexual contact or the vertical mode are the usual mode of transmission. Then about site of infection. In case of HSV1, lesions are occurs above the waist, most commonly around the mouth, and in case of HSV2, lesions are occurs below the waist, most commonly in the genital areas. Then about spread via nerve. After infection and replication in a local site, the virus spread via nerve. That is, virus then invade the local nerve endings and it is transported by retrograde axon of flow to the dorsal root ganglia where it replicates further and then undergo latency. Primary HSV infections are usually asymptomatic and mild, and systemic manifestations occur in case of immunocompromised patient. Then about latent infection. HSV has a tendency to undergo latency in the neurons. HSV1 undergo latency in trigeminal ganglia and HSV2 undergo latency in sacral ganglia. It is a non-replicative state. That is, HSV does not replicate in the latent stage, except for a small RNA called microRNA, which is encoded by latency-associated viral gene, which maintains the latent infection and prevention of cell death. Then, in this latent infection state, the virus cannot be isolated. Then about recurrent infection, the reactivation of the latent virus can occur following various provocative stimuli such as fever, external injury, physical and emotional stress and exposure to UV light. Via the axonal spread, virus go back to the peripheral site and further replicates in the skin and mucosa producing secondary lesions. Then recurrent infections are less extensive and less severe. Then about clinical manifestations. HSV has an incubation period of 1 to 26 days. In case of HSV1, the common manifestations are orofacial infections. In case of HSV2, congenital infections and intractable uterine infections are commonly manifested. First about orofacial mucosal lesions. The orofacial mucosal lesions are most common manifestations of HSV. The most common affected site is buccal mucosa and the most frequent primary lesions are gingivostomatitis and pharyngitis. Most frequently recurrent lesions is herpes labialis that is painful vesicle near lips. Then other lesions producer are ulcerative stomatitis and tonsillitis. 
many cases are asymptomatic but can predispose to secondary bacterial infections then nervous system encephalitis it is the main manifestations it is face the most common cause of acute sporadic viral encephalitis and most frequently involving temporal lobe HSV1 is more common than HSV2 in case of nervous system infections. Then children get primarily infection and adults get recurrent infections due to reactivation of HSV in the trigeminal nerve. Then about meningitis. HSV can cause recurrent lymphocytic meningitis called Mullerite's meningitis. And the other manifestations include autonomous nervous system involvement like sacral region involvement then transverse myelitis, Guillain-Barre syndrome, etc. Then about cutaneous lesions. HSV usually infect through abraded skin and cause various lesions. First about herpetic whitlow. The lesions present on fingers of dentist and hospital personnel. So we can see a fingertip showing herpetic whitlow. Then about febrile blisters. Fever due to any other cause can provocate HSV to cause recurrent blisters. Then about herpetic gladiator. It is a mucocutaneous lesion present on the body of wrestlers. Then other lesions include eczema herpetica and erythema multiforme. Then ocular lesions. HSV1 is more common than HSV2 to infect the eyes. Severe conjunctivitis is the most common manifestations. Recurrent lesions develop into dendritic ulcers of cornea or the vesicle on the eyelids. Then corneal blindness. Involvement of the corneal stroma may cause obesity and blindness. HSV1 infections are second only to trauma as a cause of corneal blindness. We can see the severe conjunctivitis with the dendritic ulcer. Then about genital lesions. HSV2 is the most common than HSV1 to cause primary as well as recurrent genital lesions. The genital lesions are described as bilateral, painful, multiple, tiny, vesicular ulcers. This may be associated with fever and inguinal lymphadenopathy. Then about visceral and disseminated herpes. The common manifestations are pneumonitis, tracheobronchitis, and hepatitis. And the risk factors include immunocompromised patients, malnutrition and AIDS, pregnant women and transplant recipients. Then about neonatal herpes. HSV is the one of the most common case of congenital infections along with the other torch agents. First about transmission. Here the newborn acquire HSV infection most commonly during the birth from the maternal genital tract. However, Transmission can also occur in utero or after birth. HSV2 is more common to cause neonatal herpes than HSV1. Then about clinical features. The babies are almost always symptomatic and present in one of the three forms. That are local lesions involving skin, eye and mouth and encephalitis. It is associated with higher mortality and if survived, the babies are left with the permanent neurological impairment then disseminated disease involving multiple organs which include the CNS neonates are at a higher risk of disseminated visceral infections then about lab diagnosis in lab diagnosis first we are going to the cytopathological changes identification by Chang smear preparations the scrapping obtained from the base of the lesion can be stained with roids or gems of stain and the cytopathological changes we can detect include inclusion bodies called Lipschultz body and the formation of multinucleated GH cells. In the figure we can see a sang smear preparations showing multinucleated GH cells. Then about virus isolation. Virus isolation can be done by conventional cell lines which detect diffuse rounding and ballooning of cell lines. And in shell wild culture, we can detect antigens by immunofluorescence. Then viral antigen detection can be done by direct immunofluorescence. Then HSV DNA detection is done by PCR. Then antibody detection can be done by ELISA. In the figure, 
we can see a indirect immunofluorescent assay for HSV1 or 2 antibody detection. Then about treatment. Acyclovir is the drug of choice. Anti for mucocutaneous infections, acyclovir and its congenates, famcyclovir and melacyclovir are used. And for ocular infections, topical idosurdin or topical vildoribin are used. Then for HSV and cephalitis or neonatal herpes, IV acyclovir is the treatment of choice. Then acyclovir resistance has been reported among few HSV strains. So, for those patients which are developed resistance against acyclovir, we can treat it given with false scarlet. Then about prevention, use of condom to prevent genital herpes. The neonatal herpes can be prevented by prior administration of acyclovir to mothers during third trimester of pregnancy or delivery by elective caesarean section. Currently, no vaccine is licensed.